luxury brand Lexus is late to the EV game, but now that the RZ has arrived, can it make up for lost time? This week's Lexus RZ is appearing courtesy of Automotive Addicts, and with me is its publisher, Malcolm Hogan. So Malcolm, this is the first global EV from Lexus. What were your overall impressions? So yeah, I, I think it's a pretty good car overall. Um, great packaging, um, excellent features, luxury features, you know, heated, ventilated front seats. Um, got the typical infotainment system from the Toyota Lexus brand. Um, I have no real complaints over the car as an overall package, except for the one issue being the range. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow, especially in this particular category. And even if you go below this category, even to something as basic as a Chevy Bolt, right? even something like that is going to have more sure. range than this does. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The uh, manufacturer estimates 220 mile range uh, with this particular configuration, meaning the smaller wheels. You know, having the 18 inch wheels will add to your range, getting that full 220 miles. Having the larger wheels, the 20 inch wheels, which actually look better, a lot better in my opinion, uh, you get about a not 196 mile range, I believe, around there somewhere. But the crazy thing is, which you've probably experienced as well, is the range estimate on the dashboard really varies. It's kind of a mixed bag. It's not giving you a true representation of what your range is actually going to be. I fully charged it, you know, before you took the car out and I um, think it was, you know, had 151 miles, 147 actually when I, you know, ran the air conditioner for a few minutes. But from my understanding, when you got back, it showed the same range after you doing your driving so yeah actually it did show uh, after we live in different parts of the city of course mm -hmm. I live on the south side you live on the north side of Jacksonville Florida uh, it actually showed I'd gained a mile of range by the time <laughs> I got back up here to the north side of town however uh, one thing I did notice so in defense of Lexus when I was firing up Android Auto uh, it did have a note about this being pre-production software. So I do wonder mm -hmm. if that might also be the case with what we tend sure. to call the guessometer. Sure, sure. You know, perhaps there are over-the-air software updates or perhaps the regular run cars right. have refined that. So I do want to give Lexus a pass sure. based on that disclaimer I saw in the navigation and Android software you know, figuring, well, okay, they may have given us a press car really early <laughs> in the run. That's poss a possibility. That's not happened. I mean, it's happened before. So, you know, that's a very huge possibility. And, you know, credit to Lexus for releasing the car and, you know, having a fully sorted out a EV, you know, where there's no issues that I can find, no glaring, you know, hiccups or software issues that I can see. Other than, I guess, the charging pad did not charge your... Um, Android phone. Yeah, we did a quick comparison. Of course, you've got an iPhone. I've got an Android uh, Samsung Galaxy. In my case, uh, the phone won't charge, but for you, it charged right up. So, right. again, this is a very early run version, so it well may just be one of those hiccups. Sure. But overall, like I said before, it's a really well put together package. It kind of reminds me of the Lexus NX, you know, uh, as far as the uh, fit, uh, the sizing of it, you know, it's pretty good size up front. The RZ is actually based upon the Toyota BZ4X and that in turn is shared with Subaru with the Solterra EV. Now while the RZ obviously shares a lot of styling cues with the Lexus family in general, if you look at its silhouette you'll also see a lot of similarities between the Toyota and Subaru that I just referenced. Now, when it comes to actually driving the RZ, I think Lexus did an excellent job. I'm very happy with the driving dynamics of this SUV. It starts with the steering wheel. First off, the material itself, it's very soft to the touch, feels like it's gonna hold up well. The steering is very nicely weighted. I'm on a fairly bumpy road right now, and the Lexus is doing a nice job absorbing the bumps. And another thing that I really do like about the RZ is it doesn't 
feel like a heavy car. Now, it does have a smaller battery pack and that probably helps for sure with handling. Now, one thing that our test car does not have and is gonna be a little later in the run, but Lexus has confirmed will come to the US is drive-by wire steering and a sure. yoke. In comparison to what you have on the Tesla, you know, the yoke steering wheel, the system from the from the Lexus and Toyota, of course, will be a fully by wire system where the ratio really varies, meaning you don't have to turn your hand all, all the way when it crosses. So that will be an interesting system to try out. Yeah, and as I was reading up on the car and watching some videos that other journalists had done, it sounded like they were fairly impressed, but it did take a period of adjustment. Sure, sure. So Malcolm, of course, you've driven a lot of different Lexus models over the years. Sure. How has the infotainment changed? How has the interior changed? Compare it in general to various, for example, you even had a convertible uh, just a short sure. while ago. Yeah, the LC500, yeah, yeah the very interesting car. And this still has that Lexus feel, believe it or not, being an electric vehicle. You know, the first electric Lexus I've driven, the first electric Lexus in the United States. It's a very, very Lexus feeling. The one slight let down, I guess, is the um, the digital gauge cluster kind of looks a little not particularly Lexus-like, meaning it's not as bright as the other ones I've found. The opaqueness is kind of uh, dim in a way where it kind of dims a lot of the LCD readout. The heads-up display in the RZ is very well done. The basic display gives you your indicated speed, whatever the speed limit is on the roadway you happen to be on, and it also tells you what direction you're headed in. So for example, at the moment, I'm headed southwest. But where it really shines is when you turn on the adaptive cruise control the lane centering, when you want to go ahead and change the radio station, it shows you a wealth of information in the display so you don't have to glance down at the gauge cluster or all the way over to the infotainment system. A quick note, there is no glove box in the RZ, so you'll have to put those proverbial gloves in the center console. The good news is it's nice and deep and it is well designed. In fact, it opens both ways, so it's convenient for both passengers and the driver. And the shifting knobs, very nice and easy to use. One thing, when you first get into the car that you may not realize, it's a little bit different from some cars in that you push down and then twist the knob to put it in drive or reverse. The rear passenger area of the RZ is certainly comfortable. It starts with a full down armrest that does include cup holders, does have reading lights, and it does have rear AC vents. However, it does not have separate climate controls for the rear passengers. You also get two USB-C outlets for smartphones, and then you get one 12 volt outlet as well. The RZ comes with a 71.4 kilowatt hour battery. Now, when you're charging at home in your garage or at an AC based charging station, such as ChargePoint or a Tesla destination charger, in cases like that, you'll be able to charge at a maximum rate of 6.6 .6 kilowatts per hour. Lexus says at DC CCS fast chargers of 150 kilowatts or more, you'll be able to go from zero to 80% in a half hour. So Malcolm, what did you think of the styling of the uh, RZ? The styling is a little objective. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, I find a lot of Lexus enthusiasts, they kind of like it. You know, it's a grillless front end, but it still has that traditional spindle look of the Lexus grill area. It's something that some people are gonna have to take a while to get used to. And what about the utility? How would you rank it in terms of the utility as compared to the competition? I think the utility is decent. Uh, not stellar, but it's okay. Now up front, you can see that Lexus decided to forgo a frunk. Instead, you get a traditional engine bay. Of course, in an EV, there's no engine, but you can see the 12 volt battery, the actual electronics and all the rest. One thing that is a little bit unusual, given this is a luxury class vehicle, you get a prop rod to hold it open as opposed to struts. What was your overall impression of the infotainment system since this is the latest and greatest at this point from Lexus? So yeah, Toyota Lexus has been very cohesive 
very consistent about the system that they have now in their vehicles. It's identical to the ones found in the Toyota. So the Toyota Lexus share the same system, the 14 inch screen. It's, it's very straightforward and I think it's very simplified, which is a plus for Lexus, especially coming from that old joystick, if you want to call it that system, was horrible, I think. But moving to this system, I think was a bright move. You know, Malcolm, you're a person that's had a lot of different vehicles with rear camera mirror systems. How does this compare to the best in the category? So yeah, it's very comparable. It's very much like all the other systems that I've experienced. Uh, very high refresh rate, very high definition. The only, the only downfall of those systems is at nighttime, you do get a little bit of glare from headlights, which they have not sorted out for some reason on the systems. But otherwise, it's great, especially if you have some people or stuff in the back where it you know, obscures your view. You can't see out the rear window. You know, Flip the system on, you got that live camera representation of what's behind you. And the other downfall, I say, with the system is your eyes focusing on that you know that LCD screen you're used to a far distance view while you're driving and naturally with normal mirrors you know you look up you see that distance as well but your eye has to refocus and readjust to that system yeah and the first time you use it when uh, you come to a traffic light and you see somebody behind you come right up right. to the edge right you know, it's a view that you don't <laughs> get with a regular mirror so at sure. first it's a little jarring but once right. you get the hang of it yep. having that extra wide view I think oh, is great. very helpful. Oh absolutely. When it comes to passing on the highway or quick spurts you're going to be perfectly happy with the Lexus I think. It's got a five second flat zero to sixty that's according to Lexus. It does feel nice and brisk yes it's not the neck snapping acceleration that we're seeing in some of the upper level electric SUVs but especially for somebody coming from a mid-level gasoline SUV like say a V6 you're gonna feel like this is a fast vehicle now when it comes to the regen paddles on the RZ I'm not quite as big a fan as I am of some of its competition I think Lexus did a good job there are multiple levels of regen available However, even in the top level of regen, it's not going to slow down as much as I've seen with some other EVs. And I personally really like that wide range of adjustability. So the Lexus is close, it's good, but I certainly wouldn't call it top of the class. To put a bow on this review, I think the RZ is a great second car. But if you're a road tripper, you probably are going to want to keep looking. If you've enjoyed this episode of EV Rider, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can bring you more reviews like this one and more adventures in EV motoring. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.